Tech Cocktail Conversations, candid insights from startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from around the globe. I think there are going to be a number of changes in social media over the next two to three years. Uh, in particular, when you look at the consumer, the publisher, and the marketer. So from a consumer perspective, social networks have reached a critical mass. There are over a billion people on Facebook. Twitter, I believe, is over half a billion users. So the key in order to be successful from an application perspective is really about creating signal from noise. So your news feeds are cluttered. So I think the people that figure out how to leverage context to deliver the right content are really going to be successful. Add this was able to scale to 14 million sites in various different ways, but looking at it from the beginning, what we did was find a really simple wedge. So um, I'm often talking about waves. The wave that we rode was social. So that opened the door and a lot of different publishers, marketers, folks like that were looking at how to participate. And once we identified that wave that opened the door, the key was to find the simplest solution that we could, that we could deliver really rapidly. So um, I think Eric Ries has a great concept that people are using quite a bit in the Lean Startup, which is MVP. I think we took that to as lean as it can get, which was a very simple widget that had its own viral capabilities and became almost its own distribution channel. One of the biggest takeaways that I have in terms of entrepreneurs looking at starting a company is make sure that you cast your net very, very broad. So when you're thinking about early customers, it's good to focus on 10 to 20 customers, but make sure that the solution set you're building can scale to a much broader audience. In terms of maintaining a healthy work-life balance, I think it's absolutely critical. I think I know that because I probably didn't do that too much in the early stages. Um, I think it's critical for work-life balance is to achieve it in small steps. So for example, when you're looking at exercise, you just commit to doing simple things that you can actually achieve, not unlike in the business. So I'm going to work out and run three times a week and do 15 minutes versus what all entrepreneurs do, which is create a massive plan and audacious goals. And then you have two major huge undertakings, a business and a health plan that are really tough to do. So I think DC is a really unique market in terms of starting a business. Um, in terms of the disadvantages, I think that if you're starting a consumer-facing startup, something like a Facebook or LinkedIn, um, you're lacking a bunch of expertise, both in terms of capital and in terms of developers, to scale quickly. So when you look at something like a YouTube or Facebook, when they want to scale, there's a thousand engineers down the street so they can scale very quickly. On the reverse side of it, uh, that same thing that makes Silicon Valley very, very great actually uh, is a disadvantage. So if you're a slower growing company or you have more lessons to learn, your churn is much higher. So the tolerance for not even failure, but tough times is very low there. So I, th I think retention is good. Um, and one more thing for DC that I think is really good, which is structural, is the fact that we do have the government, the fact that we're sitting on top of the infrastructure for the cloud. I think if I was going to start an enterprise cloud computing company, there's a lot of inherent advantages to being here. Um, in terms of clientele, but also in terms of sheer bandwidth. When you're sitting on top of um, all of that infrastructure, costs are actually lower and you can engineer it better. Mm -hmm.